Well, we're back in the living room and we have such a treat for you today because we have a kingdom couple, a powerhouse. They are totally in love with Jesus and their faith is radically contagious. In fact, their church is called Contagious Church. And uh, I hope by the end of this interview, you will go join them live stream, that you will join them in person if you're in this area, and that you will connect with, they have so many resources to help you in your walk, no matter what stage you're in. And so it is my delight to welcome the Laura Cole so and the John Cole. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're way over there today. <laughs> but... Uh, but before we jump into the interview, I, I would like to just take you to a clip to kind of give you a little introduction to their heart. Growing up, I often wondered why I was born. Uh, I experienced a lot of verbal abuse. I was always told I was nothing, I was no good, and I would never amount to anything. During my early years in school, I was bullied and so fear set in and it controlled too many years of my life. I was paralyzed. I was silent. God, why was I born? I pursued a career as a nurse and I thought, this is my purpose. This is why I was born. I always wanted to work with children. As I sought God and read his word, I realized that I was fearfully and wonderfully made that God had a plan and purpose for my life, that I wasn't just born, I was divinely dispatched in the earth. God told me I would do great things in the earth, and today I'm living and walking in my purpose. I'm a world changer. I'm a history maker. I am a global solutionist. Yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. We all are, right? I know. <laughs> well, I I concur with everything that you said. You are beautiful and brave and bold and brilliant mm -hmm. and just one of God's absolute choice vessels in this hour. And your husband is as well. Yes. And so before we just dive into this, I would also like for the audience to get to know you. Hello, I'm LaJean Cole. You know, I want to share with you, one, why we wrote the book, Divine Dispatch, and also the fact that when you have a divine dispatch from God, you've got to realize that many obstacles may come your way, but God always gives you the ability to triumph over them. Did you know that about a year before I wrote the book, I had a stroke? And I was told that I would never be able to accomplish many of the things that I had accomplished before I wrote the book or before I had the stroke. But what God has for you is for you. And so we wrote the book Divine Dispatch after the stroke and God caused me to be able to write it, to be able to articulate, to be able to understand and to be able to cause you to understand how to find out about your divine dispatch and your purpose, your destiny, the things that God has called you to do, things that God has called you to do that no one else can do. And listen, let me tell you, nothing can stop you from fulfilling your assignment in the earth. Get your copy of Divine Dispatch today. Well, I'm sure you've guessed by now, we are gonna talk about their new book, Divine Dispatch. And they are not new to being authors. They've authored over 20 books, I think 23, 24. They have been to over 30 countries, 150 cities, and they are using their gift. They are occupying until he comes. And when Jesus comes back, he's going to find them empty because they've given everything out uh, to the glory of God, for the glory of God. If you wanna know more about the plethora of things that they do in the business world with marketplace, with uh, uh, discipleship, with church, with evangelism, with writing, go to lajohnandvalora.com. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see all the different ways that you can reach them and find out more about them. They are epic uh, pastors and exhorters. They are disciplers of disciples and they are just amazing people, and you get to enjoy them today. So thank you all 
uh, for this work and thank you for everything you do for the kingdom. Thank you so much for having us and this amazing opportunity to be here. Um, it's such a, such a blessing and thank you. Yeah. Okay, so tell us about Divine Dispatch. Uh, you were on a plane, mm -hmm. as you are a lot, because I yeah. see you know, my Facebook feed. I'm like, they're like, smile, we're going here. Smile, we're going there. I'm like, another plane. Lord, strengthen them, yes, strengthen yes. them. Um, so tell us, how tell, how'd you get the vision for it? Well, you know, we were on our way to our good friend, Samuel uh, Aboleda. And he's a pastor in uh, Lima, Peru. And so we hopped on, we were on a plane and we were going to one of his meetings. And um, as we were traveling, I just began to really feel that God wanted us to do something on this thought of, of being a sent one, being sent by God. And uh, so we started, you know, we just took out our phones and we share our notes. We started sharing a note. And before you knew it, we had like six or seven pages of notes. Uh, that were written. And really, the, if the truth be told, we could probably have extracted probably two or three books from all the notes wow. that we had written. And uh, so we began to write. And as time went on, you know, we wrote a book and we started, you know, doing training in our local assembly. And then uh, I was talking to one of my friends who then was a, uh, was a, was she published with a certain company. And, uh, and so all of a sudden they said, hey, I think that that book would be a phenomenal book. And Chosen Books, uh, you know, decided that they would publish uh, Divine Dispatch for us. So wow. uh, make a long story short, it was just an amazing process uh, that we really begin to look at, like, everybody that's born. And sometimes we can just think, well, I'm just born. Uh, and some people, some people may not necessarily have a, an assignment in the church, but I think that everybody is born with an assignment from God, whether we're doctors, whether they're lawyers, whether they're firemen. I think God... Uh, gave each one of us that the divine DNA that causes us to know who we are. So it doesn't matter what you are or who you are. God gave you the the instinct and he gave you the, uh, the, the, the insight to be who you are. So then you could fulfill that calling for him and represent him in the earth. Yeah. Well, the book is wonderful about identifying that everyone's here mm -hmm. because they have a problem to solve, mm -hmm. right? that they have a hurt to cure, mm -hmm. and you really do a great job. Now, many people that have never met you have been exposed to you. They look at you. You are two beautiful people, and sometimes people make assumptions and just say, oh, they haven't been through anything. <laughs> of course they can do all these things. I've gone through so much. And, but you guys have fought your way mm -hmm. out of, through, and mm -hmm. overcome so many adverse situations, right. of course, with the help of the Holy Spirit and the power mm -hmm. of the blood and the cross. Right. But um. One thing that you addressed in the open, and I'm sure if there's people perked up, is that you had a stroke right. at a very young age. You were mm -hmm. in shape, and there was, it was a surprise. Right. right. So tell us about it. Well, my husband and I, it was really just after our annual conference, um, Fearless Women Global. Um, he wasn't feeling the best um, during that conference, and so a couple of days later, we're sitting in our living room, and it's about 1030 at night. And I noticed it seems like he could not move. He was trying to move, but could not move. And I said, honey, are you okay? And he couldn't respond. Mm -hmm. And then he tried to get up, broke out into a cold sweat. I immediately called the ambulance. They took him. The doctor called me. Because during that time, we're, we're talking 2020, July, probably around the 25th. Um, and so I was not allowed into the hospital because of COVID, huh? because of COVID. Mm -hmm. and the doctor called me and said, your husband has had a stroke and I need your permission to give him a specific medication because he can't coherently give me that answer. So I was really at peace, even though I heard those words, I had an overwhelming peace because I knew everything was going to be okay. Um, he was there in the hospital for about five days. And so I was talking to um, the doctor and I said, why is he still there? You know, he needs to come home. He's ready to come home. We would FaceTime because my husband and I were always together, yeah, right? We were always, you know, together. So that was the longest that we'd ever been apart um, from each other. But the doctor told him and myself that he would not be able to talk the way he used to talk. He would not be able to walk. Um, the way he used to, he would not be able to write books. They diagnosed him with aphasia. 
And so they said, you know, he would have these challenges. He started um, speech therapy, occupational therapy um, shortly after discharge. And so it, it progressed and they said, well, Mr. Cole, this is kind of the way things are going to be. And he said, I don't accept that. And so they kept trying to refer back to the diagnosis and um, what the doctor said. But he said, I don't accept that. And pretty soon, God began to perform such a miracle in his life. Yeah. Um, probably going into the third month, they actually had to release him and they had to change his diagnosis. Yeah. Go Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> because God performed a miracle yeah. and he fought so hard. Um, you know, my husband's ex-military. He doesn't, you know, he's not just like, oh, well, whatever. No, no, he's a fighter. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so evident that there was more inside of him. And I told him, I said, honey, the stroke didn't happen to you. It happened for you yeah. because there was something else inside of you that you didn't know that you had to dig deep inside to get. And as a result, this is what was inside of him.